Good morning, everyone. How's everyone going? I have a guest lecturer with us today. The lecturer in charge. Say hello. Say hello. No, she's not going to say hello. <laughs> Sometimes she will actually meow if I shake her around like that, but I don't really want to shake her around. I feel like that's not very polite. But anyway, she's, she's chilling out for the morning here. She's wishing you all the best for the work that you have to do in all the courses that you have at the moment. And she's reminding you that there's only a few weeks left. So um, it's time to put in that last bit of effort and then be able to chill out for the summer break. <laughs> um, if you haven't noticed already, uh, the second assignment has been released. Um, the official pronunciation for the second assignment is Kuspotify. Uh, <laughs> that's actually literally is the the official pronunciation so um uh tammy one of the tutors who did a lot of the back end work on this assignment um we were discussing what we should officially how we should officially say the the name of the assignment and we were thinking of c spotify cs spotify and stuff like that stuff to make it sound like it's like computer science and stuff and then we came up with Spotify and thought that was the funniest. So that's the one that's that's the one that stuck. So if you're um, if you're looking for um, uh, looking for a way to to say the name of the assignment, it is Spotify, and we will be calling it that from now on. Um, hopefully, uh, everyone has had at least a, a quick look at the assignment spec. So the spec came out first on Sunday, and then yesterday evening, um, all of the files were released. So if you're super keen, maybe you've started working on the assignment, but if not, um, there's still plenty of time. Um, I'll be doing a live stream, a kind of out of schedule live stream on Thursday afternoon. Um, and that will be similar to the, the bonus live stream that I did for... The first assignment where we'll have a quick look through the spec, um, I'll give some advice on how the assignment should be approached and stuff. I'll get Tammy to come along as well because um, she did a lot of the little details in the back end so she'll be able to explain a few things to us if we need. Uh, and that should give people a little bit more information and for, for some of you that might be like, I want to watch that before I get started. Um, and um, for some of you that might be, just be like, I have some questions because I've started reading the spec and I want to talk about uh, how I should approach this assignment and with that, that stream will be open for all those kinds of things. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, oh, assignment one is in the process of being marked at the moment. I think I said this stuff by, by email, so I don't really have to spend too much time on it, but assignment one is in the process of being marked, so um, it won't be long before we get results. Um, we're hoping, I mean, it does take time. Like it's it's in the same way that it takes time to do an assignment, it takes time to mark one as well. Um, but we're hoping to make sure that we get you the feedback from the first assignment with around a week or so before the due date for the second assignment. So that way, if you do get some useful feedback about how your style is set up and things like that, you can make some appropriate changes. You'll have enough time to make changes to the second assignment. And I know for some of you, <laughs> it will mean if we get the first assignment's marks back a week before the second assignment's due, you won't even have started the second assignment. Uh, I laugh, but I know it's true. <laughs> oh, sorry. Someone said, did I change my mic again? and I'm pretty quiet today. Let me make sure. Okay, just one second. <laughs> just gonna dig into my sound settings and make sure everything's okay. This will be funny if it's actually a different mic setup. Oh no, that's my mic. Let's, ooh, there we go, that's the problem. Okay, it's usually around here. Are we... Am I... Yeah, okay. My my, my sliders on the um, 
on my streaming software on my OBS are now much better. They're up in like the the optimal range rather than quiet. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, thank you for not letting me get too far into that uh, with the quietness. <clears throat> so everyone's going to have to turn up the volume a little bit for the first first preamble. I mean, having said that, I didn't get into any of the technical stuff yet. So that was just um, um, that was just me talking about things that are happening in the subject at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Much better rap quality. <laughs> I don't have a rap prepared to, for today, but I have been naming the trilogy of linked list lecture lectures <laughs> after a certain famous movie trilogy, just for fun. Okay, let's roll into it, all right? So, oh, Mega Grog just wants me to freestyle. Um, no, no, it's all right. If I can't think of at least something to start the freestyle with, then I'm just going to leave myself hanging with nowhere to go. Um, okay, so this is our second lecture on linked lists. So as we know, the first in, in every good movie trilogy is this bombastic introduction to the world, and the second uh, sets up a significant challenge for the heroes, and then the third is the final climactic... Uh, um, showdown? It's not always a showdown, but it's the final climactic tying up of the things that happened. And so we'll be doing that later. But today, we will give you a challenge. Um, so, last week, we put together the final pieces we needed to, um, to get linked lists going, which is um, structs and allocating structs in memory. So our ability to, um, to grab pieces of memory that last longer than the function they're created in, or um, in a way, we can consider it to be declaring variables that last longer than the curly brackets that they're, they're made inside. So the curly brackets is called program scope. Um, so every time we're in a part of the program, we're in a certain scope. Um, so every curly brackets that's outside of the code that we're in, we can see everything in that. Um, and then everything we create within the curly brackets that we're in only lasts as long as those curly brackets. Memory allocation allows us to create things that will last through the entire program so long as we know the pointer to it. If we know the pointer to it, we can find the piece of memory and we can use it. Um, we built that up, I'll, I'll jump back to that one in a second, we built that up into linked lists by doing one subtle thing, which was allowing a struct to contain a pointer to the same type of struct, which meant we can start chaining um, uh, chaining structs together. And we started calling those nodes, linked list nodes, and even in the demo we started actually calling them players because we started naming them for what they actually represent. Um, the other thing we looked at was multiple file projects. And you now have a couple examples of multiple file projects because we've got the one that I showed in that, um, uh, in that lecture. But on top of that, we have um, now the second assignment and the second assignment has actually multiple ways that it can be um, that it can be compi compiled, which is super interesting, right? Because when we have one file with a main in it and another file with a main in it, and we 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 choose which one of those we compile into our program, our program can act differently. So when I was talking about the idea that we have a main file and then we have this other pair of files, like the C and H files, um, in your assignment you've got this pair of C and H files where we've made the H file for you. So it's nearly like, you know, I was talking about the H file can be an agreement between programmers. It's nearly like you're programming with Tammy. So Tammy did a lot of the coding work in the back end. So she wrote the main file um, and the H file, and you're seeing how the H file could be used in the main file, and you're writing the C file so that it meets up what is necessary in the H file. So it's nearly like you're in a collaborative project already um, with one of the tutors, which is pretty good. It's nice to be in a collaborative project with someone that you trust <laughs> and someone that you know codes well already. Um, okay, so um, I think that's everything that we we're talking about for last week. Um, what are we looking at today? Um, we are continuing link, link lists. So we're actually not, um, uh, not adding any new uh, technical topics or anything like that, but we're delving deeper into this one. So today is entirely about adding things to linked lists. So previously we had the um, create player function, which is something that could um, allocate some memory and assign some pointers. 
But what we want to do now is we want to get a lot deeper into um, adding things to linked lists because, as I was saying, one of the um, useful things about linked lists, one of the um, things that makes them potentially, it's not always the same. Like, you know, I would never say that linked lists are better than arrays. I would never say arrays are better than linked lists. I would say that both of them are fit for a different purpose. Um, but one of the things that makes a linked list more flexible than arrays is the ability to just add items in in between other items without having to shuffle things around. Like if I want an array to become one length longer and I want to squeeze an item in exactly halfway on the array, so the array has to get bigger and I squeeze another element in like that, um, that takes a lot of work. I will probably have to create a new array that's larger copy all the elements in, skipping over a gap, and then write the value in there. So it's, it's, it's pretty heavy-handed trying to do that in an array. With a linked list, on the other hand, um, it's a matter of allocating a new piece of memory and getting a pair of pointers and just shifting where they are so one goes up or one goes back. So there's a little bit of, like, fiddling, and, but it's not that hard. Uh, Mega Grog said, interject flashbacks. So, yes, this is, like, uh, the idea of inserting something into stuff that happens. Um, uh, Raymond's asking if abstract data types will be included in the final exam. That's a that's a question for the future, but I will answer it anyway because we haven't even covered abstract data types. We've we've looked at multi-file projects, but we haven't extended that idea to exactly how abstract data types works, which is what we will be doing next week actually. Um, but yes, they will be to a certain extent in the exam. They may not be like super deep in the exam, but you know we'll. We'll get there, we'll get there. Um, I think um, once I teach them, then it'll be worth studying them. And after I teach them, I will talk about uh, what's in the exam. So they're kind of in the exam, but they're not a super, super focus. So the later things get in the course, um, the less we examine them. Because when you think about our, our cycle for teaching things, we, um, Gurchen, when we pull the all-nighter to write the exam, shh, shh. I, I always think this is quite funny because um, students pull a lot of all-nighters to get assignments done and they don't realize that for us as the, the academics and the course administrators and stuff like that, the all-nighters are the release date. <laughs> so you may have noticed the slightly staggered release of assignment two that happened over Sunday and Monday. Yeah, we, we of, of course, that was, that was all planned and we wanted to do that so you had time to read the spec before you start looking at the code. It was like reading time in an exam. It makes your learning better. It would definitely wasn't us just cramming like crazy to try to get this thing out in time for you. Obviously not because we're highly professional and, and we wouldn't necessarily need to, to spend like the whole weekend smashing this thing out to make it work. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay yeah sean wants to penalize us one percent per hour okay so now the maximum marks that anyone can get for for the assignment is now lower because we've all been penalized one percent per hour <laughs> let's not do that <laughs> unfortunately there's nothing to penalize nothing we can penalize us on oh there's one thing i needed to point out it's not super important yet but it will be important to everyone. I'm, I'm thinking about this last minute thing. Um, there's going to be a, a crucial power outage that has to happen to the CSE building um, on the Friday before the exam's due. It's like more than 48 hours before the exam is due, but it is a time when a lot of people are going to be uh, wanting to do a lot of work. So I think it's the Friday evening before the exam is due. We're definitely going to say more about this. We're going to send you emails about it and stuff like that. So everyone knows that at a time that a lot of people might be working on the assignment, um, people are going to lose access to things like VLAB and SSH and stuff like that. So, and I'm sure our website will go down as well. So there'll be, there'll be a gap there that people need to plan around. I mean, you've still got three weeks to do the assignment, so there's still... If you add up all the time you have available, there's still enough time, but there's a gap right near the end. So that's something that people will have to take into account. Um, we'll tell you more information about that when we get it. So they're still scheduling. They've given all the staff the warning that sometime in that afternoon there's going to be there's going to be downtime. But when we figure out exactly when the time is, we'll let you know. 
Okay, so today um, I'll do a, a recap of um, of linked lists in general, and then some of the stuff that we worked on last week. And we've got the code that we finished on on Friday last week, and we're going to continue adding to that code to add to linked lists in specific ways. So we want to be able to insert anywhere in a linked list, and we're also going to think about the idea of um, inserting into um, into linked lists, uh, say, in alphabetical order. So what we're going to do with the, the Battle Royale is try to make it so that after we've finished inserting everything, it goes in in alphabetical order. Okay, so recap of linked lists. I just, I just love this guy, so I'm just going to... Wait, I'm just going to move my face out of the way. So, uh, <laughs> I have a node. I have a pointer. Ugh, linked list node. <laughs> I've always wanted to cosplay as this guy because of how easy it would be. Like literally, all I need is a pen to to just draw that hilarious mustache on, and and a, and some leopard print pajamas, and and then just dance. Anyway, in fact, let's 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 go ahead and just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Williams, Mark's Halloween costume confirmed. Okay, so. A linked list, as we've seen, is based on this struct. The key part of this struct is this pointer here. Note that it is a pointer to a struct node. So a struct node is a particular variable type, which is this variable type that this pointer is in. So the variable itself can point to another variable of the same type. This allows these structures to be chained together. I have here an integer data. Um, this is just some information that's carried in the node. So I started off with the simplest possible example here, but we are obviously going to be able to put other information in a struct. So the, I don't know what you'd call it, the payload, I guess, of the struct or the, um, the information uh, inside the node um, can be any information we want. Um, the examples here in the slides are just integers to save space for the amount of text on the slides, but in the example that we do in code, we've already got more information than that. So we have a string, which is a player's name. If you look in the um, second assignment, these things get much more complex, where um, inside the node, we have pointers to other nodes. Um, some of these nodes actually have pointers that start other linked lists. So you get this kind of structure of things all connected to each other. I've got some images uh, in the um, in the assignment spec that shows the overall structure um, that shows you that idea. Um, and when we get really deep, um, much deeper into computer science, we can get this this idea that there could actually be more pointers than this inside the node. So we could have something that links up to two nodes at once. Um, and we can have things that link up to a whole array of other nodes. Uh, and then you get this interesting idea that you can have not just things connected in a line, but things connected in this like spreading graph of possibilities. So there's heaps of really cool stuff like that that you can get to. Um, okay, I'll move myself back out of the way. And here's a diagram that shows you that kind of idea. So a general linked list, the way we would always have it, is we always have a pointer to the first node. Each of these is separately allocated memory. So if we don't have a pointer to the first node, we don't have access to anything in the list. But we only need a pointer to the first node because the first node tells us where the second node is. Second node tells us where the third node is. Third node tells us where the fourth node is. And in this particular example, the fourth node says, my pointer um, that, that leads to the next node is aimed at null, so it's aimed at the hash define null, uh, which says that there's no other nodes in this list. But we can access all the nodes by following sequentially one next pointer after another and looking at all the nodes that they point to. <laughs> yeah, Trent said graph theory hype. Yeah, um, we do a lot of that stuff later on in computer science. We do a lot of like uh, graphs. The idea that like 
one thing is connected to multiple other things, those things are connected to multiple other things, which means that this thing, say with two hops, has access to like, you know, a hundred different things. If each, if everything was attached to like ten other things. So there's some cool stuff we can do like that. Um, Mega Croc saying Euler paths. Yeah, we can get like this. Yeah, if you if you get deeper into it, there's so much so much computer science um, that hinges on this simple idea of a pointer to the same kind of thing inside it, and we do multiples of these, and we do all this other stuff. Having said that, one five one one is not going to do anything with more than one pointer inside each node. What we're going to do is get these basics really solid, um, because once we've got these basics solid of how to use the linked list, how to manipulate, how to move things around, if we then spread this thing from kind of one dimension into multiple dimensions, uh, hopefully that you'll have a better time when that happens. So we don't want to do like multi-dimensional linked lists at the same time as we're doing, as we're just learning how they work. So the examples I'm going to do in lectures, single linked list, only, only one linked list. But then when you do the assignment, there'll be linked lists where each node has a pointer to another list inside it. And so you can see how we would add a second dimension to these things. The other thing that we looked at And this is reasonably important because this is getting us towards um, the idea of how to process this information was a basic loop um, through a linked list by using the next pointer inside each of the nodes. So this structure here, I think we were doing it a little bit more specific where we were setting up the node inside the function, but it's the same kind of thing. I have a node pointer that starts at the start of the list. And then if it's not null, it can do something with the current node it's looking at. And then it can say, once I finish doing that, I move my pointer to the next. So note that N is a pointer, but in order to change where a pointer is aiming, I don't use the star. If I use a star and a pointer and, and changed its value, I'd be changing the value of the variable the pointer points at. But if I don't use the star, it means I'm changing the pointer itself. Changing the pointer itself says the pointer stores a memory address. If I change what memory address is stored in the pointer, what I'm doing is changing where the pointer is aiming. So see any time that we have a pointer and we change its value. So this is assigning a different value to n. It happens to be a value taken from n, which is interesting. Um, but what we're doing is changing the value of a pointer, which doesn't um, change anything about the variables that the pointer is aimed at or anything. But what it does is it change, changes which variable the pointer is aimed at. So, I, did I have... Oh, no. I think it was last, last time I had an example for um, a, a diagram for how the looping was moving the pointers around. So you can go back and check the previous uh, slides if you want. Um, uh, Jamie's saying this seems like a good way to program our dungeon. So remember we were talking about, I think in assignment one, we were talking about using a 2D array to do like a dungeon. One really, really cool thing you can do with something like linked lists in a dungeon, because you know how linked lists are just like anywhere in memory and they can point to each other. If we are taking that dungeon example, um, a really cool thing that we can do is we can have secret passages. So we just assume that the, the distance to walk the secret passage is something that just happens off screen or off camera. But you can have uh, something that says that this portal end is linked to the other portal end and the array is still there. But when you walk through this thing, you turn up at the other point. And that works really well with pointers. Um, and then um, someone else was saying, uh, Miguel is saying, could you also have a pointer to the previous element to make jumping backwards faster? Yes, if we wanted to loop through in the other direction, if you wanted to, uh, each one of these could have a next pointer and a previous pointer. Uh, we're not necessarily going to be doing that um, uh, as what we're teaching you in 1511 because what we want to do is show what we can do with the minimum level of complexity to start off with. Um, but you're not limited. Uh, by that. If you want to try that out, 
in something like your labs. Actually, I think a lot of the labs, we, we fix the struct so that you can't change the struct. Um, but in the assignment, you actually need to change some of the node structs. So if you want to, you could play around with that. I don't know if there's actually anything in the assignment that gets easier if you have a previous pointer, though. So I'm not sure if it's worth it. But it could be something to experiment with if you want to. Um, I think it would be interesting for someone to do a challenge where they set up a structure that um, goes in both directions and set up two functions, one that loops forwards and one that loops backwards. Um, so that way you get some experience with both. Um, William said, when you're doing Spotify and Mark Shee says, roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. <laughs> That's a, it's a joke. A Dungeons and Dragons joke if anyone doesn't know Dungeons and Dragons but uh, the game master the person controlling the game will tell everyone to roll for initiative when a fight starts and sometimes that's the first inkling that you have that you're just about to get ambushed by something okay so let us continue the example that we've been working on um, I'm going to I know like my previous lectures I've done a lot of um, I'll talk theory and then we'll write code. Um, but this time we're going to intersperse it because the examples already started. So the theory that I'm going to teach you will go straight into uh, uh, straight into the example. I think we will like we'll talk a bit of theory and then go on a break before we actually start coding. Um, but still, let's look at where we're up to. So so far we have defined basic player structs, which are linked list nodes. In fact, let's grab the actual code. because I want to set myself up for today. So I'm going to keep, what have I got here? Lecture 12. So lecture 12 is our previous lecture on Friday and we have our battle royale.c. So that's the file that we're going to be continuing. I'm going to go up one level. So remember the dot dot takes you just up one directory. make a new directory for lecture 13 I'm going to copy lecture 12's um, oops wrong slash battle royal dot C oops, into lecture 13 all right, so now when I go into lecture 13, I don't want to work in the lecture 12 directory because I want my work to be organized into the right directories. And also it's better if I save that one as like the point where we're at, at lecture, th lecture 12. So I've got two copies of the same file now, but this one will, by the end of today, have expanded on uh, what we had before. All right, I'm gonna open that up in my editor. So here we have the linked list demo. So part one was create a linked list using a function, creates a single node, looping through the list and pointing out the names. Part two, um, inserting into the linked list. And this one's gonna flick over to November, 2020. Um, uh, I've got a couple of questions there. Raman's saying, still kind of confused. How do you make the pointer point to the nodes? And Girishan saying, yeah, me too. Uh, and Miguel is offering an answer. Use and to get the location of a node or use an existing pointer to the node and assign that to the pointer called next. So let's look at how we would actually build these. So let me let me do the recap and then we'll, we'll go into detail and we'll say, in order to get a pointer to aim at something, we must give the pointer the address of something. Now, either we give something the address by using the and to take the address from a variable itself, or if we already have a pointer to something, we take a copy of that pointer. One of the simplest ways to look at this is here, where we're saying the n which is a pointer to a node, now gets changed to a different pointer to a node, which is n next. So 
for example. <laughs> Let's do this in CS Paint. Okay, so for example, I have here a very basic linked list. Just a couple of nodes. And this one's pointing at null. Okay, so let me create my pointer n. So the pointer sits in memory somewhere. And we say, this thing starts off pointing at the first node. And then when I say to it, n is equal to n next. Uh, I'll use another color. This thing is the next pointer. You know what? I'm going to do it all in that color so that it's a little bit clearer. So this is the next pointer that comes out of this node. So if I say n is equal to n next, this is n next, this green one. And this green one is aimed at this node, which means that in here, is stored the address of this second node. And so if I take what was in this next and I overwrite what's in the n here, which is what I'm doing here, I'm saying whatever used to be in the n, I don't mind. I'm going to go look inside the n. So I follow this pointer inside the n and read the next. So the next is whatever's written here, which gives us access to this second node. What that's going to do is say to this n, you no longer aim at this node Oops, I'm going to do it in its own color. You are now aimed at the same location that this next was because the pointers, the value of the pointer is defined by what it looks at or what it aims at, which is the address that it stores. So the pointer might be sitting in memory somewhere, but the important thing about it is where this arrow ends up, which is what... Um, uh, what value is stored there. So if we if we go into like even more detail, let's put some memory addresses on this on these things. So this is 0x58. I'm just making these things up, right? Because I don't know where this memory is allocated. Um, 0xA4, for example. So in here, I should have drawn this bigger. I've got a lot of space, but I didn't draw it with a lot of space. Um, in here is stored 0x... Right, I need more space. <laughs> 0x... A... 4. That's the actual value that's stored in there. Let's wind this one back a second. When it is aimed at this node, the value that's actually stored in n, I'm going to call this one n, is 0x58. So that's what this, this arrow represents. This arrow represents the fact that this thing is storing the address of this node. This one is storing the address of this node. So what happens if I say n is equal to n next? So I take n and I come in here and I look at the next pointer, which is 0xA4. So these are just values I'm making up, right? If I take that value and I overwrite this value with that, it changes this value. So it's no longer 58. And it says, let's copy the value from that one, a4. And so if this is now pointed at 0xA4, this arrow that I, this is kind of, the arrow is not even a part of the data structure in a sense, it's just our representation of it, is no longer pointed there. Because this, this pointer is storing the memory address 0xA4, it means that this pointer is now connected to this one. So a lot of what we're doing in terms of like, how does the um, the pointer aim at something else is about storing the memory 
adre address of another object. So all of these objects, when we allocate them, are going to get um, memory, particular memory addresses. So this one could be something else. Um, F three. I'm just I'm just doing these in hexadecimal because, like we we've, we've we've sort of seen that. And if you if you do print out the values of pointers, you'll get these hexadecimal values. Um, so each of these knows the memory location of the next one in it, and we do that by setting them up in that way. Let me see if the, the questions are, are helping now. Uh, wait, Girachan's saying, just realized second is different. Raman's saying, right, I understand now. Um, it's just confusing how you first create the pointer. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, and Miguel saying, yeah, when you use malloc, it will always give you a pointer to the thing. So if I, if I call malloc over here, um, uh, let's choose a color I haven't used. Okay. So I, I allocate some new memory for, I don't know. Let's say I have a struct called game and those were all players and I allocate memory. Um, the game will sit somewhere else. Um, B0, I'm just making these up, right? Um, when I do my memory allocation, I will always be given back a pointer. So, malloc returns this. So here is a pointer to that. Um, it won't even have a name yet. It'll just be the return from the um, the memory allocation, but it will be a pointer that stores this. And then we take a copy of that pointer and we say, keep a hold of this. If we ever lose this pointer, we lose this whole thing. And then we can't, um, we can't use it and we can't free it and it becomes a memory leak. Um, and Raman's saying, is struct player pointer n the same thing as pointer n equals struct player? Uh, no, they're very different actually, Raman. So think about the first one, struct player pointer n is a declaration of a variable called n, which is a struct player pointer. Whereas star n is saying we're not looking at the pointer anymore, we're going to go into um, into one of these nodes and then you're changing the node itself. So struct player star n, as you're saying there, is, is, is making a pointer to something. Whereas if you use the star on something after it's created, then you're accessing the thing that it was aimed at. <laughs> Girachan saying the amazing artwork, well, artwork helped. Um, I do prefer, this is the kind of situation where, um, I think linked lists, and here's a piece of advice for the exam. People were asking about the exam earlier. When you're working on the exam, have something like this with you. I mean, personally, I would use a piece of paper and a pen because it's quicker than a mouse and your handwriting is much better with a pen. Well, most people's handwriting is much better with a pen than with a mouse. Mine is strangely getting really good with a mouse. <laughs> I think because of all these things. Um, it's way easier to think about um, linked lists visually because it's really easy when you connect objects together with lines. It is much easier when then you think about... Um, the more you think about pointers as numerical values, the harder it is to kind of keep track of what's going on. So the more you think of pointers as connections between things that say, I store the location of something and I'll draw a line that means it's the location of something, the easier it is to remember what they're doing. And now you can think of as any time, uh, this is what's happening over here. Um, Anytime you change the value of a pointer, uh, you are not kind of, you are technically, but you don't really want to think of it as rewriting the value in terms of like the number that it stores. You want to think of it as moving the arrow around. So if I put a new address into a pointer, what that does is it changes where this arrow ends up. So somewhere in my code, this arrow is now going to be pointing at something else. 
Um, so drawings like this are going to help a lot when you're working on these questions. Um, I suggest doing a lot of drawings like this when you're building up the structure that you want to put together for your assignment. Um, I suggest always having bits of paper around or a whiteboard or something like that when you're um, when you're doing stuff for the exam because they'll help you with this. A lot of the difficulty with linked lists is not necessarily the code. The code is really simple. Like I'm going to do all this stuff here in like two lines of code because it's it's that simple because all we're doing is replacing values um, in nodes. Uh, in pointers, but um, the the thing that's going to be the hardest is for us to wrap around in our heads what our actual structure looks like and what we want to, what changes we want to make in it. We're gonna. This is not the only image we're gonna draw today. Um, Raman, do not apologize. Do not apologize for triggering a very, very good piece of learning. This lecture is set up for these things, by the way. Like, I actually, if you notice, there's less slides in this lecture than there are normally, because as the second linked list lecture, this needs a lot of this time spent in diagrams. So you didn't take up time there. I think you, you triggered some really, really valuable time, which I was potentially gonna do anyway. Like, I had plans for this kind of thing in this lecture anyway, so. Um, Please don't take it as you feel like you, um, you've taken time away from people. I think you've given time to people for those questions that you asked. Okay. So, now I think we're a little bit clearer about what's happening here. If we change the value that's stored in a pointer, what we're doing is changing where that pointer aims. Okay. Uh, where were we? We had some code. So couple of functions the first thing that we have is we have a player struct and so we can see one of the dead giveaways that we're going to be building a linked list is that we have a pointer to the same type so struct player pointer next so we've got a variable called next we're just storing the memory address of another player and we have some other information which is for this this one it is the name of the player um, we could have more stuff. So if we wanted to, we could put in the, the player's current health, or we could put in things like um, what items are they currently equipped with and stuff. I'm just trying to like think about what, what kind of stuff is, is in Fortnite. Oh, what current dance do they have uh, equipped and um, what, uh, how much money have they spent on um, cosmetic upgrades to their character? <laughs> it's like, that's what Fortnite is for, right? Fortnite is about the dancing and the cosmetic upgrades, and there happens to be a game that you play if you're bored. But otherwise, it's really about those things, right? Um, so, we have that struct, and we have a way of creating a player. So, this returns a pointer to a player, which is the same thing as these next pointers. So, this means that every time we create a player, we know where it is. So, create player here does memory allocation for one player's worth of memory. So we want to start thinking about these types, right? Um, because we defined struct player, that now becomes a type in the same way that uh, an integer is a type or a character is a type. Struct player is now a type name that we can use for things. So anytime you see struct player, think of it as one word. Uh, rather than the fact that it's obviously two words because it has space in, in between them. But anytime we use struct inside our code, it means that there's going to be a name for it just afterwards. Well, it's not always, but in the way we're going to be doing it, um, this is combined together. So we can have a pointer to this type. Um, and then we get this memory allocation line, which we'll get used to as we do it. We memory allocate a certain amount of memory, which is the size of a player struct, and then malloc will give us back a pointer to that. And so we assign the right pointer type because we know we're making a player struct, so we need a player struct pointer. Um, and this one's called new player. Then what we're doing is because we've just memory allocated it, it has no information in it yet, uh, we're going to copy the name in and we're going to set up the next pointer to whatever we were given. So we're not really necessarily setting this thing up as part of a linked list yet. But we're saying that if we call create player, we expect whatever calls this function to tell us what that point is going to be. And we did some really, really simple use of that here, where we said 
we have our linked list and the linked list is, is going to be at the moment named head and the head is a, a word that we often use to mean the first element of the list and so when we create the list there's nothing in it so the head is null but then what we do is we use this combo of create player and then have the player's node uh, have its next pointer aim at whatever was currently the head and then after we've done that we change the head to point at this player so if I was to show how that worked my head starts off pointing at null and then I create a new a new player that was under my name I think I made myself the first player and I said create player mark pointed at head so if I'm created pointing at head my next will be whatever head was pointing at so my next points at null and that completes that function and then I take the result of that function and I assign that to head so head gets the pointer that was created by my memory allocation so let's 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 create my memory allocation had this pointer here that was aimed at me and head gets a copy of this so this knows my address head gets a copy of it which means that head ends up pointing here. This thing disappears because um, we only needed its value um, and it doesn't matter because that's not a memory allocated thing so those variables can come and go, no worries. So that thing doesn't necessarily get saved but we took the value that it had and we copied it into head. And then we can create another person, another player, I think this one was called chicken. And its next pointer points at the head. So the head is currently mark. So chicken points at the head. And then the head gets changed to chicken there. So it's no longer pointed at me. It is now pointed at chicken. And we can see how this linked list is, is building up like this. So you get this and you can see I've, I'm kind of doing this on purpose how the memory locations for each element of our linked list are not lined up nice in, in our memory they're just kind of placed wherever there's free space for them in our memory but this is still a well-formed linked list the pointer points at the start of the list then every element in the list points at another element of the list and eventually they point at null so that was the way we were doing it last week where we were just saying just add a new head to the list and this actually is if we want to think about it this is how you insert something at the start of a list so if we want to insert something at the start of the list we make it the head of the list and we make it point at what had previously been the head of the list um, uh, and then this becomes the new head of the list so that when we only had the create player function that was the only way we could add something to the list um, but we're gonna look at other ways today that we can do things um, Sean saying Mark for term one should only teach COM 1511 in paint. No need to ever actually write a program. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I mean, there's all there's so much you could learn about programming without ever touching code. You know, when we think about like what we're learning in COM 1511, like like fifty percent of what we're learning in COM 1511 is like, what's the actual theory behind how this stuff works? Like a lot of what I'm teaching you is just like how does this stuff appear in memory and how do we get access to these things in memory and start moving it around? It goes back to those fundamentals. There's only two things in a computer. Storage for stuff and thinking things. And so we're looking a lot at the moment about how we store stuff. But then it's also like how do we use the thinking thing to affect the stuff that's stored in memory so that we can... Um, uh, 
so that we can actually get it to meet the theory of what we're thinking of in our head. Uh, Daryl's saying, is blockchain just a giant linked list? That is a, that's a, a, an interesting way to looking at it, because it is kind of. Everything in blockchain says that something else in the chain must exist based on a very constrained mathematical connection between them. And if anything breaks that chain, um, then we say that the links that were around the, the break, something has tampered with them and they haven't followed the exact mathematical instructions. So yeah, a lot of that. What we're, what we're noticing at the moment is what I'm teaching you here. This is why, this is why 1511 is called programming fundamentals. Because what I'm teaching you with link lists is like, it, it's opening a door. And it's opening a door to like, I don't know, two thirds of the field of computer science. Is like, because that's why learning this is so fundamental, because it opens up all of these other things that we do. Neural networks, blockchain, uh, graph theory, nearly all advanced algorithms can be, um, can be thought of as graph-based algorithms. Yeah. Um, and Kat is saying, create player function is a struct player pointer type because it returns a pointer. So that when we use head equals something, then head will point at whatever the result of that create player function was. Yeah. So we run the create player function, then head copies the output of create player function, which is going to be a pointer. It's going to be the pointer to the new one that was just created. And you've got it right there, cat. The head points at one of the nodes, one of the player nodes. That player node then points at another player node. That one points at another. Well, eventually, one of them will point at null. So I think that mine points at null because mine's the only one that copies head when head is null. And after that, head is a player and everything copies head at that point. Okay. So that's how we were putting our um, our link list together. I'm glad we went over that because that's really important. A lot of the stuff, I mean, you, you'll notice this. The harder things in the course, the things that I think need um, need more time and understanding. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with over a sequence of time and then show you them multiple times, which is why I keep re-explaining what pointers are. I think that's important because they're they're a harder thing to understand. Okay, then we have this print players function, which is going to take a pointer which is initially given to it as the start of a list and we're going to say all right we're going to make a new pointer that is initially pointed at the start of the list and we're going to say if it isn't null we're going to do some stuff with it which is to print it out and then we're going to move it so for example here we can make our current pointer and it starts off as a copy of the head. If it's a copy of the head, it's pointed at the same thing as the head, which means it's pointed here at chicken. And then it will print out chicken's name and then it will say, okay, after I've done that, I copy this next pointer, which means I will then move to here. Oh, here she is. Hello. <laughs> she did kind of meow just a little bit there. Um, and then after I've printed out Mark, I will copy the next pointer of Mark. So, oops, erasing the wrong bits. I will end up here at null. And then I will say, current is not equal to null. Okay, I'm finished. And that's how I will print out all of the elements of the list. Okay. So that's a recap of what we did last week. And I think those are the slides for all of it, which we don't need now because we actually looked at the code itself. Um, someone was saying, might have missed this, but do we need to include string.h for linked lists? Uh, we don't need the string.h for the linked lists. The reason we're including string.h is because we had string copy. Um, the thing that we need the standard library for is this one, memory allocation. Oh, I should point out, I should point out, I taught you all about memory allocation and memory leaks and things like that. This entire program is a giant memory leak at the moment. We have not freed any memory. We're gonna get to that eventually. So we're using this kind of program, this program in a kind of volatile state at the moment. Um, 
But we will look at freeing an individual node as well as freeing all of the nodes in a list. Um, we'll do that on Friday. Um, once we look at removing players, because we're going to look at explicitly removing players from the list and freeing them. But yes, the hash includes we're looking for. Standard lib dot h is what gives us memory allocation. Uh, standard input output dot h we know reasonably well because this is what's giving us printf. And the string.h is giving us the string manipulation things and currently using string copy out of that. Okay, so what do we want to do next? We want to be able to add players to the game, which is going to be inserting into a list. And we want to think about the idea of maintaining a list of players that's in order. So we want to think about inserting into a position in a list. Um, we're going to do something really simple, which is like a... Um, very clunky and not necessarily correct version of alphabetical order. So we're just going to do something really simple like that. But you'll see how once I do it that you could change it to do different things. Um, so to insert into a linked list, this is really funny, right? Because like, I'm going to say this in text and I've got it here in text. It's super, super confusing. And you'll see the difference. And once I draw the diagram, I found how different this is once I do it in the diagram. Okay, so linked lists do have the capability to insert nodes in between other nodes. And we do this by moving pointers around. So we have two nodes and we say we want to put another one in between them. And so I want to put a player in the list partway into the list. What we do is the, there are two nodes, there's the one before and the one after. So the one before, we point its next at the new node. We take the new nodes next and we point it at the next node in the list. I'll show you what's happening with these diagrams. So here are my two nodes. Memory is not to scale or anything, but you can see already I've left some space in here so we can put another node in. Before we can insert something, we need to create it. So the first thing we do is we create a new node. Um, this is going to be memory allocated somewhere in memory. For the purposes of this diagram, it's very nice and easy because it's put in between the two. You know what I might do? Actually, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I was going to change the values in here so that they were different, but you can kind of see they're different because of their names. So the new node is here. For this to all be connected up, we want it eventually to look something like this. Single chain of nodes, all linked together, ending up pointing at null. Where we are now, having created one, is we have one floating in space, not really doing anything, and this here is a full linked list. So what we need to do is we need to join this thing up into the linked list. Bear in mind that the linked list is slightly fragile. So if I break this link here and I lose it, then I lose this node and everything that came after it. So I need to make sure that at no point do I disconnect the list entirely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the new node up to this node by saying the new node's next pointer will be a copy of the previous node's next pointer. So this copies this. So that way this thing is now connected to this node, but the linked list is still complete. So the linked list hasn't, um, hasn't lost its integrity at any point while we're doing this. We've just copied this next node. Um, this pointer's next node into this node. Now we know this thing is connected to the rest of the list, we can connect this node to this by saying the previous node's next pointer now points at the node that we've just created. And so now this connects up to this, connects up to this, and this goes on to the rest of the list. So what we're going to do is look at the code that's actually going to do that connection. Um, oh, I love it when my timing is like nearly perfect. So um, we'll look at the code in a second after after we've had a break. But that's the theory of how we're going to insert something into the node uh, into the list. So let's take a break. I have an interesting break this time because I have some homework for you. It's not real homework. It's mostly just stuff that oh that can inspire you. I think it's quite funny because I was there. My face was over the word inspire. So here are a couple of things that I have found really interesting in thinking about um, <coughs> what it means to sort of 
think about computers and work with computers or even just the idea of programming things um and and algorithms and recipes for um for sets of instructions and stuff like that that that, that are some fun things so we're thinking about like the the near future of computing there's a documentary called AlphaGo on netflix um a couple of people who i hung out with at conferences and stuff like that are actually in this um uh in this movie because um i was working in a similar field uh game playing ai so i was like i was like whenever i see that one shot with a couple of friends in the background we're like hey <laughs> they're there um so it's pretty cool it's about um playing the game go uh which up until only about two three years ago was considered to be too creative for computers to understand so it's really interesting that they thought that the creative intelligence possible was like outside the realms of machine intelligence uh spoiler alert um ai is really good at stuff so they figured it out anyway i mean if you know anything about the the world of go and things like that you may have heard already that um google DeepMind has a um has a program that plays go at an international grandmaster level capability um i robots super old isaac asimov uh i want to say 1950s i'm not entirely sure the initial kind of theoretical ideas about what artificial intelligence may or may not do um based on asimov's rules the laws of robotics that uh that he came up with which was about the relationship between robots and humans super interesting right um much more modern but similar kind of feel in terms of science fiction so isaac asimov's science fiction from the era the, the golden age of science fiction neil stevenson is thought of more as what we would call cyberpunk which is a much more modern take on it and um has a look more at how humans will manipulate technology and so isaac asimov was like oh our, our first relationship with 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 technology and artificial intelligence um neil stevenson was like now that we are fully embedded with technology how will we use it to destroy other people's lives <laughs> so you get this dystopian look at the future and these are really interesting as well um and there's some other things i've mentioned the human resource machine game which is like very um very interesting kind of fun way to 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 hone your programming skills i quite enjoyed it some of the challenges in this game are deviously difficult um and i've got another one in here which i've not spoken about much uh, it's a board game called space alert where you actually program your um program your characters in the game so in normal board games you know you like roll dice and move around and stuff in this game you say that you will move at certain time steps and then later on you'll find out whether that movement actually worked or not so it's very very interesting yeah um people are saying they've actually played these games and stuff like that um okay so let's take a break uh 1203 now um we'll come back at 1208 <laughs> and we'll continue and we'll start actually coding some of these things like um uh list insertion and stuff like that all right be back soon
I'm going to pop back in because we're having a really, really interesting discussion in chat and I just want to talk about this in person. <laughs> so we're not actually back from break yet. We will be in like, like one minute. But like, yeah, super, super interesting, this idea of um, at what point do we consider something a person? Because us as humans consider a lot of things persons that aren't human. Like, we, we give a certain amount of um, respect to certain animals, especially those that near ourselves in intellect. Um, there's a lot of research that is happening um, at the moment with um, training dogs to speak, in a sense. Um, very, very interesting that they have, they've, they've been able to train dogs to identify words that they just press with their paws and they're stringing together very, very basic sentences. Um, so they're able to, um, they're able to communicate intention and things like that. And so we're, we're getting to this increased idea of like, uh, like humans are not like as much as we might like to think that we're, we're unique in the universe in terms of intelligence, like even our, on our own planet, like there were gorillas with sign language that had a full range of emotions and things like that. The only thing that sets us apart is the fact that we have evolved the ability to modulate our voice so we have full communication with the, the changes of what we can do with our voice and most other animals can't. Um, however, the, the distance between ourselves and other animals in terms of intellect is, is a sliding scale. It's not just like we're here and there's this huge cliff and all the animals are below us. Like there's plenty of them that are um, at a reasonable level of intelligence close to um, humanity. And with us creating computers that have that capability, with us already seeing that computers are surpassing humans in certain fields. I mean, like, you want to be really simplistic about it. Computers are just flat out better at math, th math than us. <laughs> like, so your pocket calculator has already surpassed some... I mean, no one's got a pocket calculator, but, like, if the, if we were carrying around calculators still, I have a chat with Dan Mansfield about this. He, he loves he loves old-school calculators. But um, <laughs> they already have more mathematical capability than us. They crunch certain um, numbers faster than we do. Uh, and so when we, when we think about it like that, like, if we're going to compare how well things can can think some things can think better than us so it's like how do we even uh, think about the situation and how do we how would we get to this philosophical idea of like what rights something has if it has the same capabilities to think as a human and maybe has the same kind of awareness of its own identity that we do uh, okay big questions big questions we're not going to talk about in this lecture though um Yeah, right, Miguel has an interesting one there about a tree that someone had that um, was in someone's will given itself. So it was given its own ownership by a person who could transfer ownership of the tree. And so the tree now has its own rights and no one can cut it down. I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, and it's very, very interesting. And Izzy's saying the game Soma is good. It's about what makes a person... Uh, I have not played the game Soma, but I do understand the reference. It's from the novel Brave New World. Well, I assume... Actually, no, Soma's like an older concept than that. But there is there is a drug in the novel Brave New World, which is, which is interesting. Okay, let's get into this. So here is a whole lot of code. Let us write this code rather than... Um, Oh yeah, Alex is saying Detroit Become Human. I haven't played that, but I heard that it it asks some really difficult questions about what you can do in some really awkward ways, I heard. I heard it has like this kind of thing of like people... I mean, you've got to think about it because it might happen. People abusing robots, and so some people seeing robots as human and not wanting to abuse them, and other people abusing them because they see them as tools, and they see them as things that can be owned. And when they're really close to the line, that's a real grey area. And it's going to get messy. Probably in our lifetimes, I would assume. But I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I have a function here. This has got a lot of detail in it. But, 
let's actually go and make this and so we can see how we piece this together bit by bit. So what this function is, is called insert after. It means that if I give you a pointer to a node in a list, we can insert a node after that node in the list while preserving its connection to the rest of the list. So let us put this together. I have, <laughs> have accidentally um, put into everyone's minds the thoughts about um, identity of computers and AI in the future. So, um, <laughs> so, so hopefully I can actually get your attention back to the present that we won't be creating any of these AIs unless we can learn how to do linked lists first. Okay, so what we're saying for insert after is that it's going to return a pointer to something. And so what we're going to say is it's going to return a pointer to the, um, the position that it was inserted at. So either it will return a pointer um, to the node that we were given, but if the node we were given is null, we will return a pointer to the one that we've just created. So we're doing that, where are we, here, to make sure that the insert after function is going to create a player. So it's gonna call create player. So we're gonna make sure that no matter what happens, we never lose the pointer to the one that we've just inserted. I think I've got a different uh, code style in the slides to the, um, uh, uh, to the code here, but you know, you'll still be able to understand the code. So our inputs are going to be the position that we insert and the name of the new player that's coming in. So note that we're not getting a pointer to a node that's created. We're going to let insert after create the node for us. So we just need to give it the information it needs to be created. So we've got a pointer to the insert position. And then we have, I'm going to call it the same thing, new name, because it kind of makes sense, the name of the new player here. Let's create this. Mm, I'm just going to add that again. <laughs> By the way, you don't ever have to do this in your own code files. I'm just doing this so that when I'm coding, it's in the middle of the screen. It's easier for you to see. Um, oh, Raman was saying there's a mistake on the slide um, with the asterisk. Yeah, yep, there is. This still works, but it's like, it's like C++ syntax instead of C syntax. Um, we put the star on the variable name because it's possible to declare more than one variable at a time. I'll show you an example. If I did... int a, b, c, this will create three integers. If I do int pointer a, b, c, a is a pointer, b is a normal integer, and c is a normal integer, which is why the star is on, to the, on the right, not on the left. So if I did this, it would make it look like I was making three integer pointers. But if I want to make three integer pointers, I actually have to do this. That's just a little example of why the star is connected to the to the name rather than connected to the variable type. Even in the way we're using it, like you really kind of would prefer the star to be the variable type because we see that all of these, this is the type and the space is here instead of here and this is the name. So it's a, it's a bit weird, but it's there for a reason. Okay, so insert after is going to do... A couple of things. So let's do the most simple example where I'm going to put my comments in first. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to say that um, first thing we need to do is create a new player. Oops, my autocomplete. Then we are going to set the new players next to be insert pauses next then we're going to set insert pauses next 
to aim at the new player. So this is me just writing down the steps that I was taking here. So create the new player, set the new players next to point at the one, the, a copy of the first nodes next, then set the first nodes next to the new player and that should connect us up. So this is that same thing I was showing before. Sometimes I like to write my comments first, makes it easier for me to understand what I'm going to do. So creating the new player is pretty easy because we have a function for it. So, um, I guess I'll call it new player again. So I've got a pointer to a new player. Oops. <laughs> right. Actual code <laughs> pointer to the new player is equal to the create player function. So the create player function is going to give us back some information and I want the name is the first thing that goes into the new player. So I'm going to put new name in there and then create player allows us to decide what the next pointer of that is. So this thing to set the new player's next pointer to insert positions next. is actually a comment for this because they're both going to happen in the same function call. So insert position next pointer. So what I've done there is I've created a new one where it's already connected up to the next one. So what I actually did was creation and connect the pointer all in one step because I'd already built a function that could do that. Sneaky, sneaky, last week I'd already planned for this eventuality, so I made sure the create player function could set up its pointer, like so. Um, so the only other thing I need to do is to take the insert positions pointer and say point that at the new node. <coughs> so insert positions next pointer is now equal to the new player pointer that was just created. So I've taken all of the stuff I talked about and I put it into two lines. I can go one better. I can go I can go one better even than that. And check this out. There you go. All of that theory and one line of code. I don't always want to put everything in one line of code like this. This 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 line of code is reasonably hard to read now. Because I've tried to do too many things on one line. But this is what I was talking about with linked lists. So much theory, so many drawings, very little code, which is what makes the code so hard to understand because you can't just break it apart into pieces. I mean, you kind of could. You go into create player and you look at how that works, right? But this, <laughs> this is like three slides worth of diagrams all happening in one line of code. I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to split this back up again so that we've got, um, we can see more of what's going on. But you can see how in code, it's actually pretty simple. Um, so all we did was make the new node, have its next pointer copy the insert positions next pointer. Um, and then the insert positions uh, next then gets replaced by the address of the new thing that we've just created. Um, we said that we were going to return a pointer. Um, for the moment, we're... Oops, I'm going to spell properly. Sometimes I get overexcited and I start typing too fast. <laughs> we're going to return the insert position. Um, and that's just going to say, you told us to insert after here and we insert it after here. This is a bit weird for the moment because I'm just inserting um, uh, I'm giving you back something that hasn't changed. So the output is exactly the same as the input no matter what because we're, we're not um, uh, we're not changing insert position anywhere in this. We're only changing its next pointer. But this gets a little bit more interesting and you saw because on the slide there was heaps of code, right? So you know that more is coming. Um, the, the thing that we're going to get as the potential issue here. So 
if we want to, we can just start using this, right? So I'm going to get rid of what we had here. Oh, actually, I'm going to leave it there so I can kind of copy paste stuff. So this is going to be the same. We're going to have the start of our list being empty. And then we're going to want to insert um, things after the list. So let me show you the, the first kind of bit. I could say if I've already got myself in the list, um, I can say the head equals insert after, and then chicken is inserted after the head. And if I want to, I can now replace these and what's going to happen is that um, I will be the head of the list and I will always be the head of the list and then chicken will be inserted as the second element of the list and then Ang will be inserted as the second element, element of the list pushing chicken along but I will remain the head of the list because everything's being inserted after me so instead of things being added to the very front of the list they're now being added to the second position of the list and pushing everything along Let's see if this works. I'm never super sure. I'm sure there's like syntax errors in what I've typed. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, <laughs> it's in a different order. The insert position was first and then the name was afterwards. Oh, wait, wait, no, create player is the same, but in search position. I mean, if I wanted to, I could flip the function around so that the inputs are the same as other times we used it, but I think that's okay. So the only issue I had there was like, I was, I changed the name of the function I was calling, but I forgot that the inputs are actually in, in a different order in these different functions. Maybe if I wanted my style to be really, really perfect, I would say that these always come in the same order. But it's hard to say which order they should be in. So each function have it should have that kind of correct order on its own. And I say this correct. Correct doesn't really mean anything because the order of the things in the function is a purely stylistic choice. Anyway, this should run correctly now when I compile this. Okay. So let's run this and you'll see the order is now not quite the same as before. So I remain at the start of the list now and everyone was inserted after. So Chica was inserted into the second position in the list because she was inserted after myself. And then Ang is added to the list after me also. And then Katara is added to the list after me. So each one of these that came in pushed whoever's in the list down one in the list, except for me because they were all inserted after me. Let's try now just doing the whole thing from there. So let's just do insert after here and everyone should now be yelling out, he's behind you. Something's gonna go wrong here. <laughs> let's see what happens. I'm gonna compile this again. Because what I would like to do is just have this thing where insert after doesn't know what the list was before and doesn't have to know what the list was before. We just want to be able to insert. Right, so I run this. Oh no, we have a problem. So, accessing a field via a null pointer. You're using a pointer which is null. Common error is using p arrow field. So we try to access something inside um, an object when p was null. And that is definitely the case because the head is null and I did insert after an empty list. So I've given no particular location and said, please insert to this list that has no location. So the head literally doesn't exist. <laughs> like there is no memory set aside for it or anything and there's no memory address. So when we call insert after of something that has no memory address, um, I've tried to do this. I've tried to do the the next of null. Null obviously doesn't have a next. So what I need to do is potentially have two different cases. So I have if 
and an else. So if insert position is null, then we want to do something different. So inserting into an empty list. So if I'm inserting into an empty list, this is not super difficult because if I'm inserting into an empty list, then, um, then all I'm going to do is create a player and, um, and do some different things with that. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two things and I'm going to separate them again. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new player, which is this, but I don't know if I can use insert position yet. So if insert position is null, Um, I actually don't do anything <laughs> if insert position is null. Uh, inserting into a list that exists. If the list exists, then I'm going to do this. Set the new players next to be insert positions next. So I can do that by manipulating new player because it's already been created here. So I'm going to say new players next is now set to insert positions next. And I've checked already here that it wasn't null. So that way I'm not, I'm not actually, um, uh, I'm actually trying to get the next of a null. I'm guaranteeing that it's not null before I do that. Um, then here we have set insert positions next to aim at the new player. This is only going to make sense if insert position exists. So it's going to come here into my else. <laughs> I'll fix up all of my indentation there. So what we have now is we insert, um, if it existed, then we do our juggling around. If it didn't exist, then what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to create a new list. We've created a new list with a new player in it. Insert position is equal to null. Um, but we, if we give back null, then what we will have done is we've created a player and we've lost the pointer to it. So what we're going to do in this case is if insert position had been null, we're going to say insert position is now equal to the new player. So what I'm doing here is a little bit of trickery to make sure that when something is returned, if we we're inserting to a list that already existed, um, we get uh, we get back um, the same thing that we gave in. But if we're inserting to a list that's, nu that's null, um, we get back the um, the new list in a sense. So what we can do then is this first time that it runs, head changes. So the first time that it runs, um, our head that had been null becomes a pointer to me. And then every time after that, we're inserting after head and we're getting the head back and it's not changing. So now we have a situation where if we want to insert into an empty list, it'll still work. It's a little bit weird. It's going to give us back something different. So I need to explain how that's working because it's, it's, it's a little odd. Okay. So insert a newly created player after insert pause in a list. Uh, return, actually, no, I'm going to say if the list was empty, return the new head of the, or return a pointer to the new list. Um, otherwise return a pointer 
to the insert position. Actually, otherwise return insert position. So if you wanted to, you could really look at this and you could say, depending on the output I get, I'm going to act differently. So I could do insert after and then say, is this the same? Um, if I get back the same thing that I put in, um, then I know I haven't created a new list. If I get back something different, then I know I've created a new list. So I will know when this had been empty. But otherwise, now I have the capability to just keep calling these things and then just build up the list. This isn't the best way to build this list. Um, this is just inserting everything in the second place, which is no different. I mean, it's different, but it's no better than what we were doing previously, where we we're just inserting things at the start of the list. However, this should actually run now. Let's, let's make sure of that. Oops, wait up. Use of undeclared to identify new player. Oh, did I, I switch my style mid-flight? I did. Yep. Did anyone see that? <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Now that I have named my, like, just use the right name for my variables. I think I told you this, didn't I? In the very first lecture, maybe. First or second lecture, I was talking about how computers are very, very strict. And so even though I used the same variable name in a different style, my compiler's like, no, nope. so that's a different word. I, I will not handle that. Okay, so now we don't have that comedy of errors before of me trying to use a field inside a null uh, pointer, and this is able to deal with that. It's giving me back the same list, which is fine, um, but it means now for my insertion, I can just use one function. Let's see what we've got uh, going on in chat. Yeah, Mega Grog was saying this could have been a void function. So you are you are preempting the fact that like if the output's always the same, why are you bothering with it? Yeah. And Trent saying, does this mean the first player we enter is always at the start of the list? Um, for the moment, yes, because for the moment we don't. Oh, actually, we can go in between these things. And I could do something like this. Um, oops. In between these, I could say the head equals uh, create player. So I could use the old method to insert someone at the start of the list. So I could put Ang in front of myself in the list. Let's save and run this. Because now we have two different ways of, of um, creating... Um, people. So now Aang gets put at the start of the list at this point, and then Katara is inserted after Aang. So Aang and Katara become the first two in the list. And I was the previous head of the list before Aang became the head of the list. And so I've got pushed down the list. So there's other things that we can do like this, where we can, um, we now, because we've got two different ways, we can either insert in the first element or the second element. Um, we can change the order of our list as we build it which is what we're about to do. Um, Rosie says, don't we need to redirect a pointer to null? Um, the last element in the list will be pointed at null, but I don't think we necessarily need to, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking there, Rosie. I'm not sure which pointer <laughs> it is, but <clears throat> in terms of um, the final element of the list, hopefully the final element of the list will be pointed at null. I'm trying to guarantee that. I think it will be because there's always a null here. And then when chicken is entered, chicken will copy my next pointer and my next pointer then will be pointed at null. So at this point in time after uh, chicken is inserted in the list. Uh, chicken has the null pointer. Oh, so you're asking, should we, should new player next start off as null? So the cool thing is we actually did that here. So see, when we create the new player, it's next is null. And if it's the only thing in the list, it will remain null. If it is added to a list that already exists, it will copy the insert positions next. If that was null, it will be null. But if that's another element, it will be another element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, tricky, tricky stuff. 
that I am using my create player function to deal with those things for me. Okay. So let's, um, we can do that kind of thing with insertion. These are the slides that do that. Um, oh, why do the slides have p next equal null included? Oh, I wrote the code differently, didn't I? This isn't necessary. Yeah, because it's already set up as null. So I think that's basically me being extra correct in the slides where I didn't have to be. So yeah, this is redundant. I'm going to take it out now because it's, it's redundant. And otherwise, the code here is the same as what I just wrote. Reasonably similar, at least. Okay. So now that we have the ability to insert, we haven't really used that ability yet. Um, because we haven't we haven't inserted in a specific position. So let's think about how to insert in a specific position in, in a list. So what we're going to do is use something in our string library called strcomp <laughs> string compare. So this is going to compare two strings and it's going to return one of three different values: zero if they are the same string. Um, they're going to be negative if the first one has a lower ASCII value than the second, and they're going to be positive if the first one has a higher ASCII value than the second. So this is not correct alphabetical order because alphabetical order would, um, would usually be case insensitive as well. This is going to be case sensitive. So we're not going to worry too much about that. What we're doing is we're just going to use something because it's quick and it's going to compare our elements. So what we're going to do to insert elements is we're going to loop through the list and we're going to loop through doing string compare between the thing that we want to insert and everything that's already in the list so we're going to be moving through the list comparing them and every time the um the word is higher than a node we're going to move to the next node and check and then when the next node is higher than um than the um then the value i guess of the string that we have then we're going to um, insert there so we're going to loop through the list looking for the insertion point it's going to look a little bit like this this is a quick diagram through so the loop's going to start here and so i've got a c e s i just spelled a word for fun aces you're all aces but i'm going to insert um the letter d somewhere into this list so to know where that's going to be I check here against A and I go, no, D is after A in the alphabet. I need to keep going. So I get here to C and I go, no, D is after C in the alphabet. I need to keep going. And here we get to say D is before E in the alphabet. So that is where our loop stops. So we have a loop that's moving this red pointer along and it's going to stop here. And I'm going to stop here and then I'm going to call insert after on C here. And then D is going to be added to this list in between these two, right? So we're, we're comparing these to find out where we want to stop. And when we know where we want to stop, then we know where our insert position is going to be. So let's go through again, a lot of code on the slides. Um, we are, I'm going to skip away from this code immediately because I think it's better if we build it up bit by bit. So we are now going to make a new um, function. And you'll notice that heaps of these things that I'm doing, whenever I'm doing linked list manipulation functions, um, they're never void functions. Because there's always a risk with a linked list that you're going to change the first element of the linked list. And if you change the first element of the linked list, then you can't just retain a pointer to the head. So we're always going to have something back just in case the linked list changes, which is exactly why we did this with insert after. There was a chance that the head was going to change, which is the only time that this thing gives us back something different. So we're going to make a new one called insert alphabetically. I might just call it insert alpha because I think people understand alpha kind of means alphabetically. I could use insert alphabetically, but then my function name gets really, really big. Um, and I don't necessarily need functions that big if I think that they're going to be reasonably understood. So this is going to take a um, pointer to a list, uh, a list of players. So I'm going to call it list 
just to give it the connotation that it's going to be a whole lot of players. And then I'm going to say we're going to add a new one. And the information that we have for new players is just their name. If this got more complicated and I want to put more stuff in this struct, I might not put all the information in here. I might use create player on out um, separately and then take in a pointer to a player to insert into the list. But for the moment, because we can create these quite simply with just the name, I'm going to say, you give me a list and a name and I will make sure this name goes into the right place in the list. Um, the other thing about this that's interesting is insert alpha is assuming that the list is already sorted. So if I was to call insert alpha here into this list, I'd have a problem because the list is not in alphabetical order. Um, but if all of these are replaced by insert alphabetically, then I will guarantee that the list is in order and every insertion afterwards is going to be okay. There, there are ways to take a list that's not in order and then rearrange everything so that's in order. Those things are called sorting algorithms. You will definitely learn about those in, in later subjects. A lot of people learn about sorting algorithms in, in programming and you will get to that. But for the moment, we're not. Uh, we're not doing sorting in, in 1511. 1511 is about getting the basics going before we start really juggling lists and, and stuff like that. So insert alpha. It's going to be my new function. Here, uh, insert an element into an already alphabetically ordered list. We'll insert into the correct position, then return the head of the list even if it has changed. Example here, right? If I'm inserting these things in this order, I start off as the head of the list because I'm the first name that goes in. If chicken gets inserted alphabetically, then she should be first in the list because C comes before M in the alphabet. When Ang gets inserted, Ang also gets put in at the head of the list. Katara gets put in somewhere else in the list, uh, in between and chicken and myself. So we need this alphabetical insertion to find the place and then put them in there. So what's it going to do? Loop through looking for the insertion point. Um, I don't need to say then. Uh, use insert after. So the nice thing about this is this is like one of these things. Now that we're getting deeper into this thing and using functions a lot, um, we you can see how I've built up my functions so that each function does one thing, but each one uses a previous one. So insert after was our ability to insert after a specific point in the list. Um, so all I need to do now is call insert after instead of having all of this code in my insert alpha function. Um, and likewise, insert after used create player so I didn't have to have all of this code in it. So each function is doing its own little purpose and then other functions are using them. So you can see this kind of thing, how we, we space our functions apart so that each function has just a specific purpose. I mean, it's nearly that insert alpha's main purpose is just to find the position for insertion and then it delegates the insertion to another, um, another function. So in order to look through and find, for the, find the insertion point, we will make a new pointer. I'm gonna use the, the notation we use sometimes, the current pointer. And so the current pointer is the thing that's gonna move through the list. So I make a new pointer that says, you gave me a pointer to the list. I know that the pointer you gave me was the head of the list. So that's where I'm going to start and then I'm gonna loop through the list. So we've seen that we can while loop through a list and I am going to, without thinking about what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set up the looping. So I know now that I can loop through the list. So 
this will definitely loop through all the elements of the list um, and it will move the current pointer through the list. What I want to do is I want to get this kind of behavior where it stops. So I don't want it to just stop at null. I want it to stop when um, the alphabetical comparison between these things changes. So this is if I am higher than the um, than the things in the list, and this is where I'm lower than the things in the list. So the stopping case is if the um, string compare says that the string I'm trying to enter is lower than the string that I see. So I'm going to put this in the stopping case for the while loop. So I'm going to string compare the new name that I'm putting in against the current name. And I said I was going to stop when the current name was higher than my new name. I'll go back to my my reference here because I've written it down about string compare. It's negative if the first has a lower ASCII value than the second. It's positive if the first has a higher ASCII value than the second. And I wanted it to stop when the first has a lower ASCII value than the second. So I want to keep going if it's positive and stop if it's negative. So what I'm saying is if it's positive, keep looping. If it's negative, then stop. So this is the comparison between the two. So if new name is later in the alphabet than current, then we keep going. And once new name becomes earlier in the alphabet than the current name, that's when we stop. So what I'm doing is I'm actually using the while loop um, stopping case to decide where my pointer stops. Um, and the cool thing about this, there's a, several really cool things about this while loop. The while loop will stop if the current is null. So the while loop will stop if it's at the end of the list. So if I am inserting something at the very end of the list, so let's say for example, instead of Katara, we added Zuko. So the question here from Raymond, what if there's a case where we want to insert Z? This is going to insert at the very end of the list. I mean, like, let's just ignore the, the function names here. We're going to use insert alpha. If it's going to insert at the very end of the list, then we do want to be able to loop through to the very end of the list. The only problem is once current is equal to null, then we don't have access to the list anymore. Also note, very importantly, that where we are stopping is not the pointer that we want. Because we've got a function that says insert after. If we have a function that inserts after, it means we want this pointer, not this pointer. Yeah. So we actually need to have something trailing behind us saying this is the one that we want because we have an insert after function, not an insert before function. Because we want this one because then we can see both of these because we can see this, this one and its next pointer can see the next one. So we actually want to say we have this, this is our loop pointer, but we want to trail a pointer that's just one behind the loop pointer. So this is going to deal with our Z thing and it's also going to give us something to put into insert after. So check this out, check this out. What I'm going to do is have a previous pointer. Now, if I'm at the head of the list, the previous element at the head of the list doesn't exist. So at the beginning, it has to be null. But then I'm going to loop through the list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move both pointers through the list. But the pointers are going to be one step behind each other. So what I've got in the beginning is a current pointer aimed at the head of the list. It's drawing time. So I've got my current pointer aimed at the head of the list and I have my previous pointer. I'm going to call that P and call this one C. Uh, and P's pointed at null. 
So C, as we know, is going to move on to the other other elements of the list because that's just the standard loop that it's going to do. P we want to follow behind C. So what we're going to do is every time we iterate on the list, C is going to move. What we're going to do is before we move C, we're going to say P is equal to C. So if P is equal to C, so our previous becomes current, the previous is going to copy the location of C, and then the current is going to move on. So the current then moves to here. So then the previous is on the node that we'd been in the last iteration, and then the current is on the next node. Then we process these, and we decide whether we're going to stop or not. And if we're not going to stop, the first thing that happens is the previous copies current. So it says, all right, if I'm going to copy the current, I will point at this one, and then the current moves on to the next one. then the current moves on to this one, right? And so at any point after we've done this movement, um, we always have a pointer to the previous and the current that we're looking at. So that means that when we stop here, we have access to this one. So we can call insert after on this one here. Oh, wait, I didn't need that. I'm just going to alt tab back to the code. Okay. So in order to move these pointers along, previous goes to the current and the current moves on to the next. So this is us moving along and when this loop ends previous now aims at where the insertion should happen. Actually I might oh no I'll leave that comment there because that's that's at the right place. I'm going to put a comment in here. Stop when when we see something that's after us in the alphabet. It's not going to be exactly correct. String compare is not uh, going to give you alphabetical things. It's just going to compare ASCII values. So We've got problems with capitals there. We're not going to sort these out at this point. Um, I think you've actually already played around with capitals and lowercase letters in the tutorial, so I don't really need to go into that. Okay. So previous now aims where insertion should happen, so we can use the insert after. So we then call the function insert after. Um the inputs to insert after were the insert position and then the name. So the insert position is the previous pointer and then the name is, I just pointed at my monitor, that doesn't help you, uh, is here, is a new name. Okay. Couple of potential issues here. One of them is I actually don't have anything in this while loop because I don't do any processing. I'm just moving pointers. Um, previous starts at null. So we want to look at our end cases. Uh, this, I think, is going to work for anything in, in the middle. So let's look at the very beginning and the very end of the list. Um, the very end of the list, I think, is okay because once current is null, previous will still be the last element of the list. Inserting after the last element of the list is something I know insert after can do. But what about inserting after the first element of the list? Or if this loop never runs because it's empty or because we're supposed to insert as the first element of the list. If either of those things happen, then previous is null. If previous goes in here as null, we can deal with that. We will get um, we will get back the um, the pointer to the player that was created, but we still need to check for that because we we're going to return the head of the list here. So we, our intention is to return the head of the list, and the head of the list is going to change if 
this loop hasn't run. So this loop has, has stopped because we're supposed to be inserting at the start of the list. Two ways this can happen. One is the list was empty, and the other is if we're inserting at the beginning of the list. Both of those will have a condition that we can check for, which is that this previous has never moved into the list. So if the previous had never moved into the list, um, we can... We can at least check for this. Okay, I'm gonna put an if statement in. I'm not sure where it needs to be, but I know that I'm checking this. If previous was null, um, the new, what do we, what did we call it? Oh, we haven't actually got a, anything we've created because we're using insert after to create it. Um, the, the new player is the head of the list. So we don't know whether it's a list that's empty or it's a list where we're inserting the beginning, but we know that if previous is null, then the new player is the head of the list. Um, else the new player is inserted somewhere other than the head. Okay, okay. So we know that insert after is going to give us back a pointer. So let's store that. Struct player pointer, um, what shall we call it? Um, I'm gonna call it insert position because that's what it's called in the other function. And so that's not a bad thing. Um, to, to do. So insert position here is insert after. So if previous was null, the new player is the head of the list, then we're going to return the insert position. Because I know that if I insert into an empty list, I become the only element in the list. Ah, interesting. I'm not done here because if I insert into a null, so if previous is null and I insert, I don't actually have the rest of the list. So I need to also make sure that after I've inserted after this, I then say I have to be careful here with what I do. Okay, so I've inserted after, which means I can join up the list. If I'm the head of the list, insert after had no way of necessarily dealing with the null list. So I need to connect these things up. So if I was the head of the list, then insert positions next wasn't um, wasn't in insert after it wasn't connecting up to other parts of the list. So what I need to do is I say this list. There's two ways that I could have a null here. One is if this is a null. If that's a null, that's fine. Then my insert position insert after it gives me everything I need. But if this was a list and all I was doing was inserting at the very beginning of the list, I need to connect my new head of the list to the rest of the list. So I'm saying it's next is now equal to the list, which is here. So what I'm saying is if I'm the new head of the list, I need to connect to the rest of the list. So my insert after will be able to say, you gave me a null. So if previous was null, you gave me a null. I will make a new list and you're the head of the list, but it doesn't connect it up to the rest of it. So I need to connect it up to the rest of it. If there wasn't anything else, then all I'm doing is I'm setting the next of that um, of that node to null. So this connects me up to the rest of the list. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I don't wanna put the return in there. Sometimes I prefer the return to happen at the very end of the function. I'm gonna decide what that is in a second. But I think I could call that insert position. Uh, oh, you know what? Hmm. 
In third position is not a great um, name for this anymore. There's no good name for this variable because this variable has two different values depending on how it's being used. Either it is the insert position or it's the new head of the list. So I'm trying to name it new head or insert position and I can't name it either one of those. So it's going to remain new position, uh, insert position for the moment. So if the previous was null, insert position is the new head of the list. Uh, we're going to return insert position. You know what? Uh, yeah, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it called insert position. It's I'm still... I have questions about what I should name this, and I will have to spend more time thinking about it. I've already gone over time for today. So, if the new player was inserted somewhere other than the head, this means the head hasn't changed. So I'm going to say that insert position, and it really is not a good name. I'm going to call it new head. Because that's what it kind of is. So, if we didn't change the head of the list, then the new head of the list is going to be the same head of the list that we were originally given. So we're going to give back the new head of the list. It may have changed. So if insert after changes of the head of the list, it will be the new head of the list. And that will happen if the previous was null. If the previous wasn't null, then the new player was inserted somewhere other than the head. And so the new head becomes the old head that we were given. All right. I really have to wrap up. So I'm going to save and run this and see if it works. I'm going to at least compile this and see if I haven't put any syntax errors in. And then I'm going to call insert alpha for all of these instead of um, any of the other inserts or creates that we had before. And we'll see what order this comes out as. Uh, this one is now calling things in the wrong order. So I'm going to save that, compile and run it. I need to compile it first. We'll see if this actually works. It did. So now what we're doing is every time we insert, so we inserted me first, then chicken gets inserted before me, Ang gets inserted before chicken and me, and then Zuko gets inserted afterwards. So what we've done now is we've made things, no matter what order they've come in, they've ended up in alphabetical order. I'm gonna have to wrap it up there, but don't worry, because that was only part two of the the linked list lectures so we're going to go back over this in detail and look at it um in lecture three and then add more functionality on afterwards but i definitely have to wrap it up here because i'm way over time so i will go to break mode wrap it up here i know that there are questions there so if you want to stick around afterwards i will um i will come back and um and explain any of the questions you have here in a moment i'll be right back oh but but that concludes the official lecture for today all right, back in a sec.
All right, I'm back. And <laughs> I think there were lots of questions going through as I was firing off the end of that uh, demonstration. Let me go back through the questions. Uh, yep, so Raymond was asking you about the insert Z. Uh, Trent was saying all names start with capitals though, so it should be okay for the moment, yeah. Um, our, our ordering is okay because um, the string compare is going to compare ASCII values. Um, so since they all started with a capital, that'll be fine. But if I throw in a few people with lowercase letters, then it screws with the alphabetical thing that I'm doing here. So basically what I was doing was just looking for a way to get a comparison between things. Um, if I wanted to be really, really dodgy with this, I could have just said compare raw ASCII values for the first character. And if two people have the same first character, then we just insert in any order and not really care about it. Um, but string compare does this thing where it compares the first characters. And if they're the same, it then compares the second characters. If they're the same, then compares the third characters, etc., and so on. So it's a little bit more nuanced alphabetical um, ordering than, than just comparing the first letter. Um, oh, Rosie was saying longer names also have higher ASCII sums. I don't think string compare is doing the sum of the ASCII values. I think it's doing a step through the letters one at a time. So I think it's a little bit safer than ASCII sums. Um, Daryl's saying, if you passed a list pointer to the function, then why do you need to create a current pointer that points to the list pointer? Can't you just the, use the list pointer in the while loop? So Daryl, that is a good question because a lot of the time when we're looping through, yes, we can just use this pointer that comes in to iterate. But if you notice, I have to do things with the start of the list, depending on whether I insert it at the start of the list or not. So... I preserved that list pointer because I know that I may need later on, I may need the head of the list. So if the newly created thing is now the head of the list and I need to return the head of the list, I will need to say that this new head of the list that I've created needs to point at the rest of the list and then, um, and then I will return this new head. If I've inserted and I haven't made a new head, um, then I will be giving back this, um, this head, the previous head of the list, which means I don't want to have used it to loop through and lost where the head of the list is. Um, so that's why I think you may have noticed this already because you were like, oh yeah, wait. So I think other people were talking about that as well. Um... Trent was saying, the issue is since you always need to return the first item in the list, if you change the list pointer directly, you're not able to return the first item anymore. Yeah, so Trent was already answering that question. I think Daryl got that from that. Yeah, cool, cool, awesome. Oh, Daryl's saying, sort of get it, but also sort of don't. Is it? It's getting, you're getting it now. Okay, cool, cool. So a little bit more info and that helps. <laughs> Daryl's like, I sort of get it, but also sort of don't. And Girishan's like, yeah, that's everybody right now. So yes, we have reached the um, the, the, the the pinnacle of, of the difficulty of Comp 1511. I mean, like, understanding it is one level of difficulty, and then using it at a great level of detail in the second assignment is also a level of difficulty that this is going to be. Um, so yeah. The first time you see something, it can be pretty complicated, but as it goes on, it can be easier. Hello. She's saying goodbye at the end. Um, uh, Nasa is saying, do you mind explaining how the name was ordered on the function insert after before the alphabetical order exists? Oh, so when we were just doing insert after, um, I have... Uh, deleted the code that I had there before, but let me see if we can change this back to demonstrate. So if I want to do insert after, when I have the head is null, so it's empty and I insert after, it's just me. I'm going to do something so you can see how this works. 
I'm going to call print players in between each one of these. Um, I'm also going to do a bit of this in between them so that we can see the difference. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to insert something and then see what happens after the insertion and then we're going to insert something else and see what happens. So let me save this, compile it and run it and we'll watch this happening step by step. So the first thing gets inserted is mark and the list is just mark and then after that chicken gets inserted after and the thing that chicken is inserted after is the head. So the head is me because I'm the only thing in the list. Chicken is inserted after the head, so chicken becomes the second item in the list. Ang gets inserted after the head. I'm still the head of the list, because the list is Mark then chicken, but Ang is inserted after the head of the list, which means Ang is inserted in between myself and chicken. So Ang becomes the second element of the list there. And then Zuko gets inserted after the head also. Because the insertion position never changes from the head, everyone that gets inserted gets inserted after the head. So Zuko gets put in after myself and before Aang and Chicken, who are there. So we get this um, uh, we get this way of inserting where because we only had one pointer in the list, we're always inserting after the head of the list. Sorry, I'm gonna let you see. Someone's being really really friendly right now. Um, yeah, so that was happening when we were doing insert after. Um, uh, then we can, if we want to, do insert alpha and see how those things work as well. Uh, Izzy's asking if I will post this code on the website. Yes, I will definitely post this code on the website. I think you're going to need it. <laughs> Cat, this sequel has been slightly worse than the original. So what we get is very much a, an Empire Strikes Back situation here where you're the heroes of the story i'm probably the 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 emperor um the, the big evil <laughs> the big evil one and so what you get is in the beginning you go oh link lists these are really cool so that's star wars a new hope which i named a new struct and this is the list strike back because everything now gets really really complicated and then the third one is called Return of the Memory, because that's where we're going to be freeing the memory and giving it back to the computer. So it's all set up. It's all like a, it's a complete thing. Chicken approves of this, I think. I don't know. She's just kind of sitting there for the moment. Okay. So we're going to deconstruct this insertion. Let's do it again with the alphabetical insertion and see what the results of each of the alphabetical insertions are. I wonder if, let's, uh, let's add another insertion to this because we're not doing any, um, all of these insertions are either at the start or the end of the list. So I want to do at least one insertion that is in the middle of the list. So we'll do Katara. Oh, Nace is asking, why does my name stay at the start of the list while other names are pushed back? The reason why my name was started at the list is because everything was insert after. Yeah? <laughs> Girochan's because it's the dictatorship. So, I was giving people a pointer to the first element of the list and saying insert after this element. So if I'm saying insert after Mark, then Mark will never be replaced as the first element of the list. Everything is inserted after Mark, which is why the function is called insert after. Because we give it a position in the list, and the position is where I am in the list, and everyone gets insert af inserted after me. So if you note, insert after says you create a new player, and then the it, it's, these aren't an empty list at this point because I'm already in there. Um, the um, new player's next is my next, so they copy my next, but then my next becomes the new player. So they get put into the list, um, but it's always after me because I'm the insert position here, 
because the, we're, we're putting the head of the list. Um, and so they get um, put in as the next element of the list. Going back to this, it's this situation. First node, second node. So this could be the example where myself and Chicken are already in here and then Ang gets inserted into the list. So Ang gets created, connects up to here, and I connect up to it. And then the next time we add something to the list, we've got Ang there and a whole bunch of other um, elements, uh, elements of the list, element vendors in the list. And if we insert, everything's inserted after the first node if this was the insert position that we came from, which is why I stay at the beginning of the list. But that's only like a, a kind of a temporary thing that we were doing in between working our way towards inserting alphabetically into the list. So when we insert alphabetically into the list, there's no specific um, location that things are inserted into. We're going to loop through and find the right location to insert into. So if I compile this again and run it, then we'll see where things are being inserted. So first is myself. I get inserted in, into the empty list, which means I'm the new head of the list. We are still with insert alpha saying, I'm going to give you the previous head of the list. You're going to tell me what the new head of the list is, and then I'm going to print it out. So what happens now is if I try to insert chicken into this list, um, it tests chicken against Mark and it says chickens before Mark in the list. So chicken becomes the new head of the list and I get moved down the list. Likewise, when we put Ang into the list, Ang becomes the new head of the list, and everything else, oh, here, uh, Chicken and Mark move down the list. So this is alphabetical insertion. Zuko, if we loop through this list looking for where Zuko should be, we'll reach the end of the list, which means this code. Here, insert alpha, we will loop through the list, and this part of the while loop will never say that Zuko should be inserted anywhere in the list, so we'll hit this instead, where we'll say we'll reach the end of the list, and when we reach the end of the list, the previous pointer will be pointed at me, the final element of the list here, and so we will insert after me here, and Zuko goes after me there. Um, and then Katara does the same thing with insert alpha, we'll loop through this list looking for where to put Katara, and Katara will say I'm after Aang, I'm after Chicken, I'm before Mark. So the loop stops with the current pointer on me, previous pointer is aimed at Chicken, Katara will get called as insert after Chicken, and so she ends up in the list just after Chicken, so we get this alphabetical insertion like this. And Kira-chan saying, the Great Revolution has finally defeated the dictatorship. Mark couldn't handle the power of Zuko. Yeah, so I didn't... I ni I'm neither at the start or the end of the list. But I think Chicken was the first one that pushed me off the start of the list. Oh, that's clarified for you, Nasa. Great. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> um, link lists are not easy things to grasp. It takes a lot of thinking around what's happening to understand them and then once you get that going it kind of works um, and also the code as opposed to most of the code we've done previously the code is is weirder than the actual functionality so when we looked at just looping through normal lists we would have a number that was increasing as we were going along when we loop through linked lists things are different because we're talking about moving pointers rather than just increasing a number. So that's why things get a little bit weird. Um, it's harder to think about things just by looking at the code. Uh, it's much easier to, this is why I'm doing so much of this. Draw the diagrams, um, split up the steps and have a look at them and then you'll, you'll get a deeper understanding of what's going on. Okay, I think that we have exhausted the questions for the moment. Um, there will be linked lists in your tutorials and labs this week, not at this level of difficulty yet. Next week, we will go to the level of difficulty of insertion and removal into the lists. But at least this week, we'll talk about the memory struct and link memory structs and linked lists in the um, in the tutorials and labs this week. So hopefully, um, 
you get a better idea of what's going on. While I'm showing you lectures, you'll also be covering the basics and stuff like that. Um, I think the questions have finished for today. Uh, hopefully there's enough information here for you to start learning about these things. Obviously this code will go online in a moment as well when I upload it. All right, thank you all. I will see you Thursday, uh, 2 p.m. if you're keen on specifics about the assignment. Um, otherwise, Friday, 11 a.m., and we will continue this example and we'll start actually removing elements from the list um, and uh, knocking people out of the list, in a sense. Okay, see you later.